Okay, we're looking for level three construction technician students. We're looking at unit sites of aim and leveling. The topic is leveling. The aim is to reduce levels by HPC method, sometimes called height of instrument. The objective is to develop an Excel spreadsheet to automatically calculate the height plane of collimation and reduce levels. Also, consider the unit information computing technology topic spreadsheets, aim manipulate data in spreadsheets, objectives, complex formula involving two stage calculations. So we're looking to develop a HPC spreadsheet that automatically calculates the HPCs, the height plane of collimation and reduce levels and also calculates the arithmetic and misclosure errors as seen here. <coughs> Excuse me. First, we need to consider confirming the right layout. We'll use the layout that you find in Chartwell's 2426 levelling book. Also, if you're not familiar with these HPC method of levelling, you'll find a presentation that explains the process in the links below in the description. You'll need to download this and run it on your PC. It'll go through all the examples that we're going to do here. We'll start by formatting a blank spreadsheet. We'll format the cells to have numbers of three decimal places. We'll write justify all the alignments. And we'll set a font to a nice readable, reasonable size font. Finally, we'll... Uh, set the data so that it does not display zero values. In other words, we'll turn off zero values and then they don't clutter up the sheet. We'll go to row five and we'll enter the column headings for the sheet. We'll leave rows one to four for administration details. The website will show you the acceptable information to put in that administration details. Site, date, name of surveyor, all of that kind of information. When we've entered the column headings, we'll highlight them and send to justify them. All that leaves to do is we need to now think about the column widths. We don't need the columns to be too wide. So we'll format the column widths to be a little narrower. The HPCs and foresights can be a little wider. And the remarks can be even wider still. Now, we need to consider the main part of the spreadsheet, which is the formulas to calculate the HPC and the foresight. Starting here with the HPC, you'll need to type in this formula, and the formula checks to see if there is a backsight, and if there is, it calculates a new HPC. It also checks to see if there's a foresight, and if there is, it turns off the HPC reading. Next, we'll consider the formula for the reduced levels. This time, start in E7. Leave E6 blank. That will be entered manually later. The formula in E7 checks to see if there's an intermediate or foresight. And if there is, it calculates the reduced level for this station by deducting, it off, deducting that reading from the HPC. Copy that formula down the column, as you did with the HPC. Next, we'll consider the error checking. We need to be able to check that there's no arithmetic errors, that we haven't added anything up. Very unlikely in a spreadsheet, but we just need to check it anyway. And we need to check that there is no misclosure errors when you were out in the field when you were doing your bookings. We can also check that the booking that you did were of a, of a reasonable accuracy. We do this by summing up the columns of the intermediate site and foresight and the height plane of collimation. And we add those or compare those to the sum of the foresights that, we've, that have been calculated. And if they are the same, then we know that the uh, 
that the, the misclosure error is, sorry, the arithmetic error is acceptable. This is the formula highlighted here. It checks the sum of B, the sum of C, and the sum of E, and it checks that they are equal to the sum of D. If they are, it will display a value true. If they're not equal, it will display a false. Let's consider another feature of a spreadsheet. Let's con consider something called conditional formatting. We'll test to see if the value in this cell is true. The value is true. Then we'll set the format of that cell to display a pale green pattern. Then we can add another condition. If the formula in the cell gives us a value which is false, value is false, then we'll set the format of the cell to be a pale red colour. Now, when we're working through the sheet, you'll see the value of that and the colour of that cell change. Acceptable misclosure. When you've done a surveying example, when you get to the end, if you finish on a known station, you can check the values that have been calculated for the reduced levels, and that will show you how much of an error there is between maybe the first and last stations. There's an acceptable misclosure of a quarter of an inch or six millimetres on small surveying projects. Larger ones, you might have a, a, a more a larger acceptable misclosure. This calculates the misclosure and it starts with six millimetres and it'll change depending on the number of uh, change points there are in the project. We're getting ready now to uh, enter some data. Perhaps you should uh, rename the sheet. I call it sheet one. Perhaps you should rename it to a blank sheet and keep it blank and make a copy of it every time you want to enter uh, data into a new uh, booking sheet. Every time you do a different project or a different uh, example. Before I uh, save mine as a blank sheet, there is of course a typing mistake in E5. It reads at the moment foresight and it should actually be reduced level. So we'll correct that mistake before we change it and save it, possibly save it, as a blank spreadsheet. So we'll come down and we'll overtype foresight with reduced levels. So now we're getting ready to enter some data. I'm going to use the data that's in the presentation that was discussed a minute ago that you can download off the uh, from the links below. I'll just make it a little bit larger there and I'll move it across to the right so I can refer to it while I'm working down the uh, down the uh, the spreadsheet. I'm going to start by entering the station names in the remarks columns. I'll start with TBM and I'll fast forward and I'll put in the uh, remaining TBM. Now, at the start of a project, you'll put in your known reduced level of the temporary benchmark that you're starting from, or the starting point. Now, as I enter a back site, we'll just have a quick look at what the uh, site will look like. This is in the presentation, so if you download the presentation, you'll see that, uh, that site layout. So as I enter a back site, 2.2, it calculates a HPC 2.2 meters higher than our 60 meters temporary benchmark. And as we work down the sheet, it calculates new reduced levels. A negative value, 3.55, well that shows you that it's an inverse staff reading. So in this example, to the uh, bridge support, and that shows us that the bridge support is 5.755 metres above the temporary benchmark. As I enter a foresight, you'll see it closes down the HPCs. But as it's a change point, there will be another backsight. So as I enter the backsight, it recalculates a new HPC and carries on down the sheet. I'll enter another inverse staff meet reading just to show that it, it can be done. 
and we'll slowly work down these values that we've got in the example and uh, until we get to the final uh, foresight because all of these uh, leveling exercises will finish with a foresight it turns off the HPCs and puts in the final reduced level and because we've gone back to a known point it's 60 meters and 5 millimeters the uh, ar the arithmetic's correct but the misclosure is 5 millimeters that is acceptable because we've calculated that an acceptable misclosure would be 7 millimeters the notes on the website will show you what you need to do about that 5 millimeters because you'll have to distribute it throughout the uh, reduced levels so that all of the uh, error doesn't come in one place remember you can download the presentation and the website's got information on HPC leveling shows you an acceptable layout for a, for a, for a sheet and also goes through this error checking and misclosure checking so that's about it for now let me know how you get on and I look forward to seeing your examples good luck